Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about teeth and specifically the dental crisis that is an epidemic all across the world. Now, when I first sat down to make this video, the starting point was the crisis that's currently going on in the UK because the UK offers a small element of free dental care. And there are problems with that because the dentists who sign up to that actually are losing money. They're not being paid enough by the UK government to even cover their costs. And as a result of that, nobody wants to do it, not surprisingly. So it's actually very difficult in the UK to find one of these dentists. And even if you do, you need to be on an extremely low income to qualify for free dental care. But the more I looked into the issue, the more I realised that dental care is a socio-economic problem because all across the world, you have to pay to get your teeth fixed. And the problem with that is that people who are poor simply can't afford to do it because dentists are a highly skilled profession and therefore they charge a lot of money for this work. And if you've got a limited budget, the last thing that you want to do is throw hundreds of dollars down the drain, going to visit the dentist for a checkup and then potentially being told that you need some fillings and a root canal and a bridge and an implant and all of those sort of things. So the vast majority of poor people are not doing it. They're not going to the dentist. And the problem that that's now causing all across the world is that poor dental health has a direct correlation to poor medical health. Because if you've got a problem with your gums or your teeth, if you have an abscess or something like that, then it will produce pus. And that pus goes straight into your mouth and therefore it goes straight into your bloodstream. And unfortunately, with a lot of dental infections, there's actually no pain associated with it. So unless you've been to the dentist and had a checkup and he can tell you exactly what's going on with your teeth, you might not know. And that situation could go on for days or months or even years. And this is now being linked to a high level of heart attacks, strokes and dementia all across the world. And when I looked into this issue, I found out that more than 2.5 billion people all across the globe have access to no dental care whatsoever. So those people are hugely at risk of dental infections, causing them huge medical issues and potentially could even result in death. So in today's video, we'll start off by looking at the issue of dental health and how it relates to medical health. We'll then have a look at which are the best countries in the world in terms of looking after their teeth and which are the worst. And anybody watching in America, I'm sure, will have labelled in the UK as being one of the worst. There's an ongoing gag that I think was started during the Austin Powers movies that the British have terrible teeth. Well, British people have notoriously bad teeth, so... <laughs> so we'll have a look at who ranks in that top 10 worst countries, whether the UK is in there, whether the USA is in there. We'll then go on to talk about dental tourism because a lot of people these days simply can't afford to pay for dental work in their own country. If you're in the US or the UK or Canada or Australia, it's very expensive to get your teeth fixed. So there are a lot of other countries that are offering the same level of dental care for a hugely lower price. And a lot of people are jumping on planes and having their mouths reconstructed whilst they take a holiday. So I'll have a look at some case studies in Turkey, in Europe, Mexico and Costa Rica. We'll then talk about the associated problems with dental tourism, what happens if it all goes wrong. And then finally today, I'll wrap up with my summary. So what I think the dental care problems are across the world and how this could possibly be solved. But before we get on to all of that, once again, I'd like to say thank you so much to everybody that's supporting the channel. If you've bought me a coffee or sent me a YouTube super thanks or signed up as a Patreon or a member, thank you so much. Really does help to support the channel, really helps to keep it going. Really appreciate everything that you're doing for me. Is your dental health affecting your medical health? Chances are the answer is yes and you don't even know it. Nothing hurts, no pain. There are over 630,000 deaths a year in the United States from heart attacks. That's a lot. Some researchers believe that 50% of those heart attacks are triggered by dental infections. That's over 300,000 deaths a year in the United States caused by preventable dental infections. The United States Surgeon General back in the year 2000 wrote a big report that basically says you need a healthy mouth to have a healthy body. 
Just because something doesn't hurt doesn't mean it's okay. Did you know that 90% of dental infections have absolutely no pain? That's right, no pain. Gum disease doesn't hurt. Most tooth infections don't either. People are really surprised to find that most dental infections don't hurt, yet we quickly accept the fact that high blood pressure doesn't hurt, diabetes doesn't hurt, glaucoma, cancer, they don't hurt. Just because something doesn't hurt doesn't mean it's healthy. According to the Center for Disease Control, 47% of Americans over the age of 30 have gum disease. Gum disease. And if you're over 65, that jumps to over 70% who have gum disease. Gum disease is an infection in the gums, dumping harmful bacteria right into the bloodstream. There's no pain, no indication you have it, other than your gums may bleed a little bit when you brush your floss. The bacteria in gum disease have already been proven to cause cardiovascular disease. That's huge. That is, that's, a, that's a big statement right there. Cardiovascular disease triggers heart attacks and strokes. Heart attacks are the number one killer in the United States. Strokes are the leading cause of disability. So as you've just seen, dental health is a serious issue. You need to look after your teeth, because if you don't, they could be killing you. This chart shows the top 10 countries for visits to the dentist, who is visiting the dentist most and therefore potentially has the healthiest teeth. And in 10th position, we've got Italy with 1.4 visits per year. Coming in at number nine, we've got Germany with 1.5 visits per year. Eight is Estonia. Seventh is Canada. Six is Korea. Five is the Czech Republic, or Czechia now. Four is Lithuania. Three is Israel, with 2.3 visits per year. And number two is the Netherlands, with a whopping three visits per year. And the country with the citizens that visit the dentist the most is Japan, with 3.2 visits every single year. If we now look at the countries that are ranked at the bottom of this list, so visiting the dentist the least, at number 10, we've got the United Kingdom. I'm sure everybody watching in the USA will be having a little chuckle about that with an average of 0.7 visits per year. At number nine, we've got Serbia with 0.6 visits, followed by North Macedonia, Ireland with 0.4 visits, Romania. At number five, we have Colombia. Number four, Chile. Number three, Costa Rica with 0.1 visits per year. Number two, Mexico, with also 0.1. And the country that's recorded with the citizens that visit the dentist the least is Portugal, with less than 0.1 visits per year. So that basically means that if you live in Portugal, you go to the dentist once every 10 years or less. And what's interesting about this list is that Mexico, Costa Rica and Colombia that rank as the second, third and fifth worst rankings in terms of number of visits to the dentist are actually destination venues for a lot of Americans to get their teeth fixed. So basically what this tells us is that you need to have money to be able to go to the dentist in these countries. And as there are a lot of poor people living there, they simply can't afford to go to the dentist. And therefore the local citizens are not getting any sort of dental care. And this chart, which takes into account a number of different factors, ranks the countries with the healthiest teeth in the world. And this basically takes into account five different factors, and they are the number of dentists per 10,000 people, the number of people that are smoking in the country, the percentage, the average level of sugar intake per year, the average level of alcohol intake per year, and then we have a total score. And obviously, when we're talking about smoking, sugar and alcohol, all three of those things are bad for your teeth. If you're doing all of them on a regular basis, it's likely that you may have some dental problems. So at number 10 on this list, we've got Qatar with six dentists per 10,000 people, a smoking ratio of 14%, a sugar intake of 23.5 kilograms per year per person, an alcohol intake of 1.5 liters per person per year, giving a total score of 3.3 on this chart. At number nine, we've got Colombia. At number eight, Norway. At number seven, Albania. At number six, Costa Rica, which is interesting because the chart that we've just looked at had Costa Rica as one of the countries with the lowest number of visits to the dentist per year. At number five, we've got El Salvador. At number four, Cuba. At number three, Paraguay. At number two, Uruguay. And the country that is ranked as having the healthiest teeth in the world is Sweden. 
and they have almost 18 dentists per 10,000 population, which is the most out of any country on this chart. Their smoking ratio is 8%, which is the lowest out of all of the countries listed here. The level of sugar intake is 33.4 kilos per person per year. And really interestingly, the level of alcohol intake is nine liters per person per year, which is actually the highest out of all of the countries here. But the overall score that Sweden has come in with is 4.6, which is considerably ahead of everybody else. So we've just seen the statistics in terms of which countries visit the dentist the most and which visit the least. And let's face it, most of us don't really like going to the dentist. It can be quite painful and it's not something that you want to do by choice. But as we're talking about in today's video, it is important because dental health can affect your medical health. But one of the primary reasons why people don't go to the dentist in many countries is that they simply can't afford it. And in a recent study, it was identified that in the USA, around 69 million people have no dental insurance whatsoever. They simply can't afford it and it isn't provided as part of their job. And in the UK, around 20% of people don't have any dentist whatsoever. They're not registered with a dental practice. So even if they wanted to go, they can't because they don't have anybody to actually go and visit. And around two thirds of people in the UK have no form of dental insurance. In the UK, it's still a common misconception that dental care is provided free. The NHS system, which provides medical care, does give free cover, but it doesn't cover the vast majority of people. But a lot of people in the United Kingdom still believe that when they have a problem with their teeth, they'll be able to go and get it sorted out for free. And that's completely incorrect. And in Canada, in a recent study, it was identified that around 32% of the whole population has no form of dental cover. So we're talking around 13 million people, when they have a problem with their teeth, they are going to have to pay. And quite frankly, a lot of people can't afford it. So this is now becoming a major economic crisis. And as you know, on the channel, we talk about economics. And the vast majority of the 2.5 billion people that I mentioned right at the start of this video that don't have any form of dental provision, the reason that they're not going to the dentist is that they don't have the cash, they can't afford it, it isn't something that's a priority in their lives. And as a result of the combination of these economic factors and also the fact that once your teeth are in severe pain, you really do need to get it sorted out, people are now turning to what's being called dental tourism. So going to countries where dental costs are much lower, where you can go and actually get all of your teeth fixed at the same time for a much lower price than you can in your home country. And at the same time, you might be able to take a vacation because a lot of these countries are actually holiday destinations. So let's have a look at some case studies of dental tourism. Dental tourism is booming in Turkey. Thousands of customers from abroad flock to the country every year with the promise of a sparkling smile at a low cost. And new dental clinics are opening every month to keep up with demand. According to the Turkish Dentist Association, up to 250,000 foreign patients flock to Turkey every year, making it one of the world's main dental tourism destinations alongside Thailand and Dubai. I think in America it costs 600 to 850 euros for a crown. It's a similar cost in Europe. Inflation is very high in Turkey, so if a patient comes, they can take a week-long vacation and at the same time get their teeth done for the same cost. It kills two birds with one stone. In the searing heat of the Californian desert, there's a strange migration taking place. A pilgrimage for people with the same problem. They need to get their teeth fixed but they can't afford it at home. They call this the dental capital of the world. <laughs> Welcome to Molar City. Thank you for coming. So no pain, a lot to gain. All right? We need, we need to start making that, taking an extra. Promoters are pitching. Competition is brisk. Are you checking prices? I need a tooth taken care of. All right, look. That's my doctor. Come on in, no waiting. Let's go. Let's go. Almost free. I'm Pablo, by the way. Los Algodones is improving the mouths of thousands of Americans. The price difference is 
ridiculous. I've had other work done here in the past, and I've probably saved twenty thousand dollars. Two thousand dollars out of pocket in the states compared to four hundred here is a big difference, especially because I have five kids. So <laughs> everybody is legit. You've got you've got new equipment. You've got clean procedures. Why would you not come? Oral health was long seen as a luxury stateside and cutting costs isn't a top priority of either political party. It is a shame because America is supposed to be one of the best countries in the world and it depends on your economic stand. Where are you getting your materials from? Uh, we get them from uh, imported from the states. Yes. So you have American patients, Correct. American materials. We use the same products that they will use in the States. This is Gary's mouth. Before and after. Several implants that would run about $75,000 in the U.S. But Gary went to Costa Rica instead and paid roughly $25,000, including travel from Naples. Dr. Eugenio Brenna sent us this video from his dental practice in Costa Rica. He sees about 25 patients a day. Patients with stories similar to Fred McGee. He made an appointment with a local dentist offering one of those introductory rates, $79 for x-rays and cleaning. And they said, you need about four crowns and a root canal. $1,600 for a root canal, then $10,000 for the four crowns. He went home and started doing research on dental tourism in Costa Rica. And they were going to do the whole $10,000 worth of work. It was going to cost me $2,800. So I'm on a plane. So let's compare the cost of a major reconstruction. For instance, four implants on each jaw supporting full bridges. Here, that would run about $50,000. We can do the same rehabilitation for $12,000. $1,000. An implant there is roughly $2,000 using the same FDA-approved material in the U.S. Average is $4,500 per implant. Figure in about two more thousand dollars for travel. How are these deep discounts possible? One reason is rent. The same space that I have in Costa Rica, I used to pay five times to seven times more in Los Angeles. Brennis, like several practicing Costa Rican dentists, are U.S. educated. Brennis is also part of the American College of Prosthodontists. We have the best equipment uh, in the world. We have the latest in technology in the world. We're not working in, in some garage, in a little chair. We, at least in my office, we have a staff of 22 doctors. Meanwhile, Fred says he's still getting calls from the dentist offering the $79 introductory rate. And they called me back and said, when are you coming in? And I told them, never. I'm going to Costa Rica. And she said, well, you're going to come back for cleanings, right? And I said, no, I don't think so either. Because I just, I said, I don't like what you guys are doing there. Your prices are way too high. I can go to Costa Rica. And she said, well, we've had a lot of people say that. But all that glitters is not porcelain. The British Dental Association has sounded the alarm as medical tourism continues to grow. Medics say patients are more likely to develop complications if they prioritize price over quality. They go for the cheap dentists. Then afterwards, after two or three years, when the cheap materials of Chinese materials used in dentistry, they start having problems. Patient complaints of malpractice highlight the lack of quality control. Rita Azim from the UK describes a traumatic experience that left her face disfigured. She now wears dentures. They were going to do five implants originally. Uh, I was ready for the procedure. They sent me back and two translators came. And they're telling me that now we have to remove all your teeth and we need to do 16 implants. And I took my mask off and my husband looked at it. He goes, what have they done to you? Your face is all sunk. Not everyone's buying into the whole idea of medical vacations. Dr. Randall Diaz has practiced in Tampa for more than three decades. He says he's treated many international dental disasters. You are going in to meet a doctor for the first time in another country. Good luck. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video because I think dental health is something that's really interesting because a lot of us take our teeth for granted. 
If you don't have any pain with your teeth, then generally speaking, you aren't too worried about the situation. You don't tend to go to the dentist every three or six months unless you've got some sort of problem. And particularly when you look at the fact that most people around the world don't have any dental insurance, it's reported that around 70 million people in the USA have no dental insurance whatsoever. So that means that if they have a problem with their teeth and they need to go to the dentist, they're going to have to pay in full. And as we talked about right at the start of this video, going to the dentist is a very expensive thing to do. It can cost you hundreds or even thousands of dollars just to fix a relatively simple problem. And if you've got a big family, if you've got a number of children and you're having to pay for all of them, that can be a very expensive thing to have to do. So a lot of us basically ignore our teeth, we just forget about them and we carry on with our daily lives. But as we heard about earlier in today's video, just because you don't have any pain with your teeth doesn't mean that you don't have a problem. You can have an abscess or some sort of infection without knowing about it because it can be entirely painless. 90% of these sort of infections don't result in any pain, but what they do result in is bacteria. And that bacteria goes into your mouth and into your bloodstream and can result in heart attacks, strokes, dementia, and other sort of health problems. So this is a very serious problem. And the problem that we've got here is that it is an economic divide. People with money can afford to go to the dentist, they can afford to pay for dental insurance, or if they've got a good job, generally they might have that dental insurance included as part of their package. But the poorer members of society, people who don't have well-paid jobs, don't have any disposable income, can't afford to pay for dental insurance. And they're the people, when they have problems, are having to pull their own teeth out or just get on with it. And this could lead to major health issues. So this is a genuine global issue. Over 2.5 billion people have absolutely no access to any dental care whatsoever. And in terms of discussing how do we fix that problem, it's very, very difficult because dentistry is a highly skilled occupation. You have to go to university and study and it takes a long period of time to get qualified. And once you're qualified, you want to earn as much money as you can. Very few dentists are offering free practice. They don't want to put all of that hard work to waste. They want to maximize their earnings, have a big car, have a big house and live happily ever after. And that's going to be a problem in terms of fixing the dental problems around the world. And unfortunately, in terms of today's video, I don't have a magic wand. I can't come up with a simple solution that tells everybody how to fix dental problems. But what I wanted to do really in today's video was highlight the issue, highlight the fact that poor dental health can actually result in poor general health. You could have something going on in your mouth right now that's causing you medical problems that you're not even aware about. And you need to go to a dentist to get that checked out so that you're told exactly what the situation is and you can do something about it. So really the objective of today's video was just to raise awareness that good dental health can lead to good medical health. If you haven't been to the dentist for a long period of time, maybe it's time to start thinking about going and getting getting a checkup, or if you don't have any dental insurance, maybe you should look into it and start thinking about getting some in the event that you might need some very expensive dental work at some point in the future. Now, hopefully you've enjoyed today's video, you found it useful, informative and thought provoking. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end, and here's something to put a smile on your face. Thank you.